name is Chris Jennecke. Uh, I'm a psychoanalyst, um, a training analyst and a teacher at the um, Institute here in Berlin, uh, Arbeitsgemeinschaft für Psychoanalyse und Psychotherapie. And um, I did my training in New York, then returned to Germany and now I've been in private practice for 30 years here in Berlin. Seit uh, Heinz Kohut, who spoke about the uh, human beings in the 19th century, he gave the example of uh, Michelangelo's Moses, the sculpture where he showed a, a very uh, determined and angry person, but who was basically cohesive in himself and was dealing a lot with inner forces and inner conflict. Then Kohut said in the 20th century, a different kind of condition came into the, our practices, which were dealing more with fragmentation and the sense of enfeeblement. And there, once again, I, th I thought that was quite helpful. He cited the artwork of the 20th century, Picasso, where the ear is where the nose is, Stravinsky, 12-tone music, jazz, all these fragmented kind of forms of, of art. Uh, and today, if I had to, I, don't, I basically don't think that human beings uh, have, have changed that much in their basic suffering and their basic um, conflicts that they're dealing with. But there are, of course, there are, there's context, there's culture, which is de also determinant for how people express themselves. But if I had to name one kind of concept uh, today, uh, I would call it, uh, it's called pathological accommodation. It's a concept by Bernard Branchef, or a perceptual accommodation, where a person uh, attempts to uh, live up to uh, an image of perfection, which was instilled basically by the parents. So the a patient just um, loses his own sense of authenticity and his identity and, and tries to become this, uh, which he has then incorporated, this vision of himself, which is basically an alien vision. Now, what, uh, how it meshes with our culture today is with this idea of self-optimization and perfection and an ignoring of, of pain and weakness and with this accent on achievement. That kind of dovetails with this idea of having to um, uh, fit yourself to this inner picture of perfection which was instilled by the parents as a requirement of the parent to uphold the tie. And then of course it would be very interesting to think about what, uh, what Heinz Kohut thought about the whole selfie culture because Kohut of course introduced the idea of mirroring and how important that is in childhood, in infant research, uh, the fit of the mother, which is, goes in nanoseconds. And now this kind of idea of doing a selfie, the point, but the thing with a selfie is you're taking a picture of yourself and then you're posting it in, into the world <laughs> and then you're getting likes or dislikes for it, but it's virtual. So the, the connection is missing. Individuality can only be born in context. Contemporary psychoanalysis considers, consider, considers itself to be an affect theory and not a drive theory. But if you put affect at the center of human motivation, then you immediately contextualize at all psychic phenomena, because affect can only be lived in, in relationship. So that contextualizes also the psychoanalytic situation. So how it works is on the bi-directional level of the encounter between therapist and patient, it's like any other relationship. I'm not saying that patient and analyst are equal, but how the mutual influence between them is just like it is with anybody, and the asymmetric level, that which the analyst picks out to, to treat, to talk about, depends on what happens on the mutual level. So it's very subjective, is what I'm saying. Q 
cure is not something that I do to the patient, it's something that we find together. What we're trying for is change in a human being, and to change is a very difficult thing to do. So changing an experiential world uh, is a very difficult task. And they can only do that through the prism, so to speak, of the relationship to us. How do they relate to us? How do they repeat past dangers that they felt? How do they repeat past, uh, how does the pain of relating come out again? And how could they experience it differently? Now that will not happen in a, in a half hour session or in a 50 hour session once a week. For that, you have to really get into the relationship. Both people do. And both people have to basically, if this is my premise, that to change someone, you have to change yourself. Why? Because if you're understanding somebody, you're already moving, decentering from your subjective way of looking at the other person. So that already means a change. Psychoanalysis always has been a resistive force, and it, and it is now more than ever because of this whole emphasis on functioning. So psychoanalysis is asking, what's it like to be a human being? Pain and weakness are very taboo in our society, and so is dying. But life is tragic in itself because we do die, and we are finite. So all these things are topics which, should be, which are largely ignored. Being human is messy, it's weak, it's pathetic, it's grand, it's everything. And that's what we try to, that's the complexity of analysis.